immediately back, sort of. Um, hmm. There. Okay, now I can see. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing. Um, two things happened, because... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it... Uh, I had mentioned that to our tech person, that it would be good to put the time zone on, because people can be watching from all sorts of different time zones. Um, that hasn't happened, so I'll mention it again. Sorry it's delayed today. Usually we'd start at 10, and I'm only maybe one or two minutes late. Um, but we had an internet outage that went on until a little bit after 10 Eastern Daylight Time. And then I, some, Nicole was using this, the uh, workshop on Friday after I had finished, because I only did like half a session and um pretty much nothing was working so i just had to turn things off and turn them back on again and rearrange the camera the uh the camera is different than it switched okay there were two ring cameras uh on, in the workshop before and now there's only one and this one here is not the one that was being used before. So all I was doing is getting this blank screen. The camera's on. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why it's not working. The light's not. Anyway, nothing was working this morning. It was a typical Monday. Um, but hopefully... Yeah, it looks like even the music is working. Um, so the only thing that isn't working today is that my large print chat window yeah isn't where it, where it used to be um, but I think I have I have it in a place anyway yeah it's Monday it's a mess uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for being patient and um, I appreciate you uh, coming in to watch whatever this turns out to be this morning so if the rest of this goes as well as it has so far um, I'm probably gonna like spill a jar of paint um, knock over my wash water break a brush you never know this could be one of those one of those really stunningly difficult days um, well I've got a couple things I can work on today one is this beast which has a name that I've been told many times and I can't remember what it is I need to have it written down, I guess, before I really can uh, can know what it is. But anyway, there's this beast that I could work on. It is supposed to look, I've got some color renderings of how this is supposed to look. It could look kind of like green and brown and orangish, I guess. Um, it could look like olive drabby with uh, brown detailing. It could even look kind of blue, okay? And what I think I'm going to do, right, I am not good at this kind of thing. I'm really not good at this kind of hyper shading and, and so on, is I'm going to paint the inside of the mouth because I've got some good colors for that. A really dark red for the inside of the mouth and then the purple for the tongue and, and ivory for the teeth or the spikes. And I'm going to paint those kind of a light color as a base color, just ivory, and then use a wash, a brown wash or an umber wash to make them look more like that, maybe, if I can do that kind of thing. So the only thing that looks kind of consistent from one picture to the next here is that the tongue is purple. So I found purple for that. And uh, then I'm going to... And this, I don't know if this will be a mistake or not, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the whole thing olive drab as a base coat and then work different colors onto it. Okay, so it's going to, it's all going to look like this, this kind of grayish, greenish kind of color. And then, I don't know, um, try to make something of it. Looks like the claws these claws down here 
generally tend to be dark gray or black. Gives me something to work with. Anyway, I could do that if it gets too messed up. Um, can just reprime it and start over. Or just keep painting layers over layers until it looks like something. The other thing I could do, and this, um, this might be more fun, is remember Muriel? I painted Muriel oh, a couple of weeks ago, and these, these were test Muriels, just testing out different base colors for her kind of burlap coat and different washes on top of it and different colors for her face and chin is oh, we're very likely to encounter Muriel in our adventure in the sewers and I know we're going in the sewers because we painted a lot of sewer tiles we're very likely to encounter Muriel but I'm thinking I might paint doppel Muriels okay that would be you know not quite colored the same way that Muriel was colored um, but like maybe darker or something like that. So I could do a Muriel. I, I could, I'll overpaint some of these things. Like I could do a Muriel in olive drab with kind of a gray, um, cloak. I could do that. Maybe a blue hat or something, a little darker color underneath. So what I we have no plan for today, I will... I'm going to do what I can do on this guy, which is, yeah, everything's moved around, okay? Um, which is to paint the inside of the mouth and the tongue and the teeth. And I'll be painting the inside of these tentacle-like things the same color as the mouth, and these spiky things the same color as the teeth. And that I can't mess that up too much. And then I'll decide at break what to do with the body. Like I said, I might just paint the whole thing olive drab and then build layers of different colors on top of that and see if that works. Or after I finish those parts, because I know I can't mess those up too much in terms of the colors I select, I can just do doppel murals. And I, I think that would actually be kind of a fun thing to do and would take, take a little bit of time. Um, yeah, there's one of these. The other one is still missing. I somehow couldn't find it on Friday and I can't find it again today uh yeah uh, let's do a flip who's not here maybe who will come on later and then we'll have to do a special flip for who um, I don't know let's do it let's do a toothpick flip so there's a toothpick and this side has a little black dot on it and this side does it. so we can tell one side from the other there black dot flip um, I came up this way and the toothpick is on the on the floor somewhere yep Monday hmm. yeah and I'm gonna have to think of something to talk about I could talk about internet connections and lack thereof so it went out oh you know an hour or so ago and then uh, just barely came back in time to start this, and then I had to restart everything twice because whatever. I'm going to really be whiny and moany and complainy today. How's that sound? So, let's paint the inside of the mouth and these tentacles this black-red color. That's a, it's a very nice dark red. Used it before. Used all these colors before. But I will mention the time zone thing again. You know that came up a couple of weeks ago. Nothing changed. I'm a little bit jealous of Nicole. She got to do street tiles. It went through a lot of gray paint and black wash. But they look pretty good. 
So I'm guessing we're going to be out on the street sometime. Okay, uh, that's enough of that. Um, yeah, so this isn't real detailed at this point. I need to get the whole inside of the mouth down around the bottom of the tongue here. Okay, inside there, and then I'll be painting the tongue a little bit later. Um, I'm not too concerned about getting it on the teeth. I want to make sure that the whole inside of the mouth and these little, whatever, these muscles, muscles here on the side. Those have a name, a deucers or something. I'm not sure. It's one of those things I used to know that I don't know anymore. Um, so here, let's, oh, look, I got a new one. The other one became such a mess that it became unusable. I think these things you get like 10 for $4 or something. So this is, this is two of those 10. So um, at the rate we went through the last one, which was that it lasted close to a year, I think. Um, we'll never have to buy these, these little things again. Can you tell I'm not prepared? The brushes are all in different places from where they usually are. My glasses on for the moment. Anyway, I'm using a fairly large brush because I'm covering a fairly large surface area and I don't have to be terribly careful. Paint up two. I don't want to get all over the teeth, but I'm going to paint up to where the teeth are. Except here where I can't get the brush in at all. Anyway, this is going to be kind of relaxing painting this morning, at least for this, because This is base coating this, and I can't really do anything, at least not yet. Because if this, if this base coat goes over, you know, onto another surface, the other surface is going to get painted anyway. The bases of these teeth. As I mentioned earlier, we're late getting started because the internet decided not to work today. It was going fine. So, uh, checking morning email. And then, uh, then there wasn't any, and then it stopped. And I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I'll get a day off. You know, like maybe it won't come back on again. But, um, you know how those things are. It's like they're, they, they don't work just enough to really be annoying. Like this whole thing got started late, right? It didn't work long enough for this thing to, this whole stream to be delayed, <clears throat> but not long enough for the stream to be like canceled. So, I guess that's why one of the reasons things got started late. And the other reason is that um, a whole bunch of things weren't working when I turned them on. Or they got changed in a way that I didn't expect. And so I basically had to reboot everything. And that's what I did is I rebooted everything. You know, that's... So there's always two things, right? If things aren't working, is it plugged in? Okay, you check that. I did. I, did. I actually did. I checked to make sure that things were plugged in. I even checked plugs of things that we're not using for the stream. 
I found one plug that wasn't plugged in, but I it doesn't go to anything. It's uh, it's like a USB that comes out of the computer onto something that we're not using. So I didn't plug that into anything because um, didn't know what it was for. But so I checked everything and things were plugged in. So that just uh, made it even more mysterious. So then I rebooted everything, turned everything off, and you know, that's the second thing is it plugged in, and then if it is, turn it off and wait at least 30 seconds. So, I think knowing those two things makes me qualified now to be a service tech at uh, at a call center. To be very polite, I could say, hello. I hope you're enjoying your whatever company internet today. No, I'm not enjoying it at all. It's not working. Oh, what do you mean it's not working? Let's see what we can do to help you get through this. Because we want you to be a satisfied com customer of whatever company. So you very pleasantly waste some time. You know, you have to spend a few minutes with the customer. You ask him other, you know, other than this thing that you're paying for not working, how's your day going? Say, well, it was going really well until this thing that I'm paying for stopped working. I understand. That can be very frustrating. I'm going to digress a little while and talk about that. Talk about reflective listening. The, well, anyway, yeah, I'll get to that. But first, you know, so I'm this customer service representative. Now it's a, it's my new retirement job. So I'm very polite and, and concerned and talking to this person about how difficult life can be because of... Uh, this thing they're paying for not working and then say well first of all check all of the connections and then you can sometimes toss in some little irrelevant thing like well is is the light the, the light on the box there that box thing you know that's called a, a modem is there a light on yeah. What color is it? Is it flashing or steady? Okay. And you don't know, I don't know what that really means or not, but it's just on the script of things to ask. And so they report it and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's a light or not or what color it is or whether it's steady or flashing. It's just something, you know, to make it, make the customer think that, that you know what you're doing and you're asking relevant questions and collecting information that will help fix the problem. But then you find out that all of the connections are connected. They even unplug them and plug them back in again just to make sure. And then you say, well, if you unplug them and plug them back in, can you check again to make sure you plug them in tightly? So they go back and do that. And all this, all this while, basically what you're doing is you're trying to make it look like you're doing something. And then... Um, And then it comes down to, well, all the connections are tight. What I want you to do, and you just say that, you know, like you're really doing like something important and special. What I'd like you to do is turn it off and wait at least 30 seconds. How do I turn it off? Well, is there a, is there a button with a little circle and a dash on it? You know, an on off button? No. But you do this this counterintuitive thing, which is well, one way to turn it off is to uh, is to unplug it. It's like I just did that. I checked all the connections. I unplugged it and plugged it back in. Yes. Well, now we want you to wait 30 seconds uh, before you turn it back on. So just just go ahead and do that. It's okay. 
um, unplug it and wait at least 30 seconds. I'm going to put you on hold here while you're waiting. And I'll be right back with you to see, see if it works. And, and it turns out that 30 seconds feels like a really, really long time, right? So maybe you tell people, wait at least a minute. Okay, because they're going to be impatient to not wait 30 seconds. And so you say, you know, wait at least a minute. And I have to go check some things. I'll be right back. And then you come back in about 30 seconds. And then you say, okay, are you still waiting? Yeah, that's good. Okay, just a couple more seconds. Okay, now what I want you to do is plug it back in. Okay, so they plug it back in, and then you say, okay. Is there, you know, if there was a light before, you ask them what the light's doing now. Again, you know, it doesn't much matter, because I'm not trained to know what the lights mean. So if there's a light, then they report on what's happening. You go, huh? Okay, let me make a note of that. Okay, now check, check to see if things are working. And then, you know, and then it's not working. They turned it off and waited at least like 35 seconds when you told them to wait a minute. But things aren't working yet. And so the next step is to say, hmm, okay, well, this, this looks like um, a different sort of problem. You don't say more serious. You never say a more serious problem. That just gets people more concerned and say, well, this, this looks like a different sort of issue than, than I can help you with. Um, I hope you give me good feedback on the survey. And I'm really sorry that the things we had you try here didn't work, but an, another tech will be with you in just a few minutes. You don't, you don't need to hang up or call back. Um, I'm going to put you on hold but somebody will be with you shortly. You know, and no one knows what shortly means, right? It's like a moment. No one knows how long a moment is. And it can be highly variable. I'm just making sure all the surfaces are covered. So who you finally showed up, you missed the flip. I flipped the toothpick three times and the third time it landed on the floor. So now I have to flip something else. But I will. I'll do that for you. And I have to. I have to finish muttering here. So anyway, yeah, I could get a job doing that because I think I could. I could handle things like telling people to check all of the connections and and telling people to turn things off and turn them back on again after waiting a minimum of thirty seconds. Even though you know you tell them a minute because otherwise they won't wait that long. I don't know. I think the magic of the 30 seconds is that comes from a time when there were real capacitors built into things and there probably still are but it took you know it took that long for sometimes the capacitors to discharge before you started things up again and recharge them so that that time the amount of time actually did make a difference now I I'm not sure now it might just be a way of you know killing time um there so that's a pretty good red i think for the inside of the mouth and that should take uh, take a wash pretty well oh maybe i'll i'm not sure what to make what color these guys should be they're really it's not clear on the uh in the pictures with the suckers they look like they're they're generally lighter a lighter color i'm gonna paint them the purple that i used that i'm gonna use 
and they, I can always highlight them or color them differently. Yeah, we need to harass them for make, to make sure. You have to do work. Um, no, I don't want to run into that. This in the sewers, it's large and it looks really unfriendly. You know, even at this point of barely getting anything done on it. Oh my, just everything's a mess here today. Um... I'll let this dry just a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, paint the tongue. That would be a little bit more of a challenge because you have to get a brush down like alongside the tongue, but not not down into the red, and then have to try to decide how far back to paint it. Um, but that, and then uh, then I'll do the teeth. And after I do that, then I'm going to set it aside. This, this is this. A, this I have been told is this does it have a name? Well, it could have. There's two ways to interpret that. One is, <clears throat> is this a specific kind of creature? And I've been told many times, <laughs> and my brain refuses to remember that this is a very specific kind of classic D and D monster. Okay. It's in the monster manual, and it's well known, but I can't remember what it is. You know, and it's so, so standard and so classic that there are, you know, pictures of it online, illustrating the way it's supposed to end up looking. Okay. But, no, I can't remember. But then you could also interpret that as whether or not this one has a particular name, like... Betty. Now, I, that would be a kind of a good name. We haven't named anything Betty in the D&D campaign yet. So, and I don't know if this is like a, a beast or a monstrosity. You know, if you could speak with animals, we could say, Hey, Betty. Are you just trying to play with us? Or does that gaping maw mean that you want to consume us? Yeah. But try to remember that name. I think that would be good to have. We'll, we'll call it that when we encounter it, because why else, why else would our DM go through all the trouble of doing a rosin print, a rosin printer, right, of something like this, saying it's a classic D, &D creature um go ahead and paint it if we weren't going to encounter it i don't know so what i'm thinking of doing as i mentioned before is painting the mouth and the tongue and the teeth and spikes okay because i know that I, those colors will probably be okay and then the body itself I'm still not sure. I'm, I just really am tempted to paint it olive drab because it's just this is really dark. <laughs> What's metagaming? <laughs> what? That if it gets printed and painted that we're going to run into it? That's never happened before, has it? No. Mm -mm. And this paint is just, it's not drying as quickly as, um, as I'd like. The top of the roof of the mouth is drying. Yeah, I did that first, but this part here around the tongue isn't drying, and that's a problem because uh, that's right next to where I'm going to be painting next. So the other thing that I was thinking of doing, and maybe I'll start working on it now, is doing some doppled murials. These were failed prints of Muriel, and I used them to test different colors before I painted the real Muriel. And what I might do is, if I paint them as doppelmurials, either we'll have some doppelmurials hanging around, or we might run into them too. I'm not sure. 
So I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of time now and digress because I'm waiting for this other paint to dry, and you just do that. Let's just paint them. I mean, what what could go wrong if they if we don't use them? That's just fine. So I'm going to use since they're doppel murals, I don't want them to look like murals. So I'm going to be painting them different green than the than the green that I used. Um, I want to paint one olive drab because I've I've got that paint out, okay, and then I might paint one kind of bright colored. Let me pick, find that color. Yeah, this color. Why not? And then I might I don't know. I don't want them to be the same skin color as Muriel, and this this is the one that I used. Um. Do that and that, and I screw away the little thing that told me what color I did use. Mm, yeah, why not? No, this is the other green that I've got out, so that's what it will be. Uh, yeah, so let's let's paint some murals. Oh, even better. Okay, there's a there's a mold flaw on the back of each one of these. This is cool. This is this gives me a real opportunity to. Um, waste some time. Well, I didn't get started until 20 after today because the internet went out and then the nothing was working in the studio. So not only did I have to wait for the internet to come back, but I had to reboot everything twice before I could even get going. So they have these these flaws in the back of the print where there's a flat spot. Okay. Maybe that's that could be a defining characteristic of a fake Muriel. But I think I'm going to get a file and I'm going to fix that. But um just just for who because who came on late. I'm going to do a flip. And I'm going to flip my plastic putty. Okay. This is a, a model filler, that uh, plastic model filler that you put into the cracks and things. So that uh, anyway, you'll see this on Submarine Wednesday. Hmm. There we go. Finally, that way. Yeah. So. Um, being unprepared, I'm going to take just a minute. I'm going to wander off screen. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let you watch paint dry. Okay. Look down in here, the inside of the mouth there. I'm going to let you watch paint dry while I go get some files so I can fix these murals. So now what I'm going to do, since I'm wearing black pants, I'm going, you know, how is that? It's still wet. Didn't do a very good job of watching the paint dry. Didn't dry. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, but on the backs here, there's this flat spot, right? And I'm just going to file away at that a little bit. Um, Use this to try to catch some of the dust so that it, it doesn't show. Hmm. 
Well, these figures I'm, I'm painting now um, are totally irrelevant, as far as I can tell, to a D&D campaign. These were just three misprints. What happened is there's a, there's a little ball on the top of the staff, or there's supposed to be a ball on the top of the staff here, <laughs> and it didn't print, or it broke off, or it was done too thin or something. But something went wrong in the 3D printing process, and so I've got three incomplete murals that I used to test different colors. Okay, because Muriel is an important character in our D&D campaign, a very important NPC. I wanted her to look, uh, I wanted her to look good, you know, or at least adequate, because there's a lot of adequately, adequateliness in, the, in my painting. So I did, I uh, tested the colors, but since I've got them, I thought, you know, while I'm waiting for paint to dry, or while I'm avoiding doing something useful like painting the monster monstrosity, that I could uh, I could mess around with the murals here. And that's that's what I'm going to do while I'm waiting for the paint to dry. So when I was talking about doing customer service, you know, at, 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 uh, about how I could do that if all I needed to do was to tell people to check the connections to make sure they're plugged in, or if that's actually something that has happened and it was plugged in, that um, you know, part of what you needed to do was to tell basically tell them that you understood how frustrating it was. So there's this technique in mental health care called motivational interviewing. Okay. Some of you out there might actually have heard about this because it's been it expanded beyond mental health care into other areas. But basically that's that and one of the techniques some of the techniques you use when you're first talking with a person to build their confidence and trust is you've got this thing called reflective listening. And what's, what's the, what the technique is, is that when somebody says something, you reflect it back. And the, the effect it's supposed to have is um, that it assures the person you're meeting with that you're paying attention to what they're saying, that's an important thing because if you're dealing with somebody who's reluctant or confrontational or something, one of the common complaints you get is you're not listening to me. And so it's really important that you not just talk over them or start giving them advice right away, but that you establish, a, you know, an understanding that you're paying attention. And the way you do that, that's why it's called reflective listening, is you kind of, you know, not word for word, because then it just sounds like, you you know, you might as well be a robot right, if you just repeat back. But in sort of a paraphrase way, you, you repeat back what you've heard. And the hard part about that technique is that the the tendency, you know, the, the, at least it was for me and some other people who had gone through this once before, is to ask, repeat it as a question. That must be really frustrating. Okay, that isn't, that isn't what you do. You don't ask the question. Okay, what you do is you say, that really is frustrating. That you reflect back what the person is saying as a declarative statement, not an interrogative one. Those are grammar words. Pretty cool, huh? Um, you do that, and so, you know, if you're dealing with somebody whose stuff isn't working, 
like our internet wasn't working today. Um, it's, it's important to do that so that you can get through the conversation without too much yelling and screaming and stuff. But if you reflect back what the person is saying, then they know that you're listening and they're more likely to not cuss you out. So when I was role playing my customer service, you know, alternatives, life, uh, job, if I ever wanted to do at work again, which I don't, definitely not. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the Krebs attitude toward work here. Uh huh. There's an illusion for you. Look it up. Look up me, G. Krebs. I could just spend another 20 minutes or something explaining it, but that wouldn't be nearly as much fun because you have working internet, I bet. You have working internet and you could look up Maynard G. Krebs. It's M-A-Y-N-A-R-D. So I like I like this you know filing stuff down because it doesn't involve painting and so when we say it's relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons it's another way to of just lying about it okay because I'm not painting although I find it relaxing I don't know if you do the, the nice thing about filing on plastic I mean as opposed to like metal is it doesn't screech you can you can get chalkboard love screeching um, and filing on metal, but these are these are just plastics, so you don't get that. Okay, well that's not. I haven't done a perfect job of getting rid of the flat spots, but they're not as obvious as they had been. So when I paint the doppelmurials. Um, there. That won't be their defining characteristic. Their defining characteristic is going to be two. Among their the two defining characteristics, and then there's always a third, and then like in Monty Python, you can look that up too, is uh, among the defining characteristics are going to be their color and the lack of a little globe on the top of, uh, of the staff. Okay. So I, had, I had used this one to test some uh, pearlescent paint on the base. I used this, this blue pearlescent base uh, as the base of the little otter figure. My character, Olseth Ralph, on the stream has, it used to be a pet, okay, but now the otter well, our druid made the otter sentient, and so now the otter is uh, a companion and no longer a pet. And it's adorable. Okay, uh, how is this thing coming along? Unfortunately, for me, it's probably dry enough now that I can try to paint the tongue. So, we'll have to put uh, doppelmurials aside for, for a bit, just a little while, and uh, take my glasses off so I can see close up. Not very well doing that either. And I'm going to get some purple paint out and start painting the tongue. And I'm going to need a finer brush. There's still a lot of surface area. Um, so, and, but I need to get down into the sides and I want to get it down far enough so that it's clear that, uh, you know, the tongue is that color, but I don't want to get it down so far that it actually gets into the deep red 
okay? Because with a camera angle kind of like that, you're gonna be able to see that. I, I can't read chat at all. We're gonna have to like double the size of, of this, of the size of the print. The third character, you're already playing too. So you get to play our NPC. Um, Z Zoria has. Uh, okay, well. Wonder. If, yeah, maybe on break I'll try to. Here we go. The thing is that. I used to be able to read this without my glasses, but my distance vision just keeps getting worse and worse. So... <laughs> I just right-clicked on it. I have the opportunity to click on Translate to English. So whatever you're saying, who uh, Google somehow thinks that it might not be English, if I clicked on Translate to English, I wonder what I would get. But it doesn't give me an opportunity to change the font size. I can move it. I can expand it, but it, if I increase the size of the box, the uh, the font size doesn't go up. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, purple paint, purple paint on the tongue. So anyway, yeah, this thing called motivational interviewing as is one of its techniques, reflective listening. So all you have to do is like listen to what someone is saying, especially if there's the emotion attached to it, like if they're really happy or sad or angry, and then paraphrase it as a declarative sentence and repeat it back to them. And for some reason, I really don't understand why or how, but it actually works. Someone who's upset, you know, starts calming down and they say, oh, yeah, you're really, you're really listening to me. And then they think, well, because you're listening to them that you really care. And the next thing you know, um, you know, you're, you, you have a success. I guess that'll work. Pretty much, pretty much in, uh, in view, I haven't gone off camera yet today. Get some purple paint out here. And uh, yeah, well, let's see how I do. This is like one of the largest things I've painted in a long time. Someone would think that it minimizes my chances of really making a mess of it, but it isn't necessarily so. So this is very purple purple. And it won't... It's going to get washed. I mean, it's not going to stay this bright. It's going to get like a black wash on it, probably, or a dark gray. And then it will... Um, change change its appearance but all of the sample pictures of this creature whose name I can never remember show that the tongue is purple and so it shall be Okay, well that's that's not bad. That's kind of a, kind of convincing. Now I need to get get it in the back of the mouth there. Okay, that was a good deal easier than I expected. Classic move. Just hit the brush against I think I hit it over there, 
What I did was um, really messed up the bristles on the brush by bumping it there. But it was against a, some area that wasn't painted yet. So it was, it was right there. It's a big purple spike there. That was a, a minor oops. If I ever get my oops buttons, I would have been reaching over, knocked something down, and uh, pushed the small oops button. So I'm looking forward to those. Someday I'll have a small oops and a large oops. Not that, not isn't that won't relate to the size of the buttons, okay? Because the buttons are all the same size. Um, but it will directly relate to the, uh, the the disaster level of the of the oops event. So there'd be a minor oops, like I bumped the brush against something that hasn't been painted yet. Okay, so that's really not not hugely significant because it's going to get painted again later. Anyway. Um, If I had, like, knocked over a jar of paint and had it spill all over the place, that would definitely be um, of the large oops level. So that's, there you go. That's kind of a good combination. That's not bad. I'm going to paint these little sucker things purple, too. Um, I don't know if they'll stay purple or not, but... You could. They're inside of a little, like a a ring, an inset ring, and I'm going to paint that whole thing this color. And then um, I paint the body color. It will just go up to the outside of it. So that just, it looks real splotchy because I want to make sure that I'm covering the, the entire area that needs to be purple. I don't want to have to come back to it and repaint it later. Although I probably will because there's likely to be an oops that needs to be fixed. So that looks um, that looks pretty slimy and menacing. Oh my. Okay. So there's... Everything looked fine. Okay. Until I turned it this direction. And the camera might actually catch that. And there's there's a big spot there. That isn't painted. That should be painted the the, uh, the dark red. I thought I was being careful. I thought I was in terms of getting everything painted before, but obviously I wasn't. Let me see if I can get the brush in there and paint it. There, now it's gone. Okay. So that was kind of lucky that I caught that while that paint was still wet enough to use. <sighs> okay. Now the thing to do on this is to paint the teeth. And I'm going to paint them a really light color. Even though in the draw the drawings the, the the printouts of what this thing should look like the teeth are pretty brownish but it's I, at least in the in the past i have had some success with this not a lot because i'm not that good at it painting them a light color and then making them darker by using a wash works better for me than painting them dark and then trying to highlight them with a lighter color. At least it has in the past. I'm not sure how that will work. This time probably uh, we'll need to go back and forth. I'm going to use this, this one with the long kind of tip because some of these I have to reach, reach in and Anyway, we'll just see how this works. And it's okay if I get the paint a little bit onto the um, skin, you know, on the outside, 
right like right there you can see the edge of the tooth is supposed to be right there but I'm gonna I'm gonna intentionally go a little bit further for the same kind of reason as before is that I'll be painting up to it later and then there won't be like a gap <clears throat> at least that's the intent Getting, yeah, this is a brand new fresh palette. Look at that. These things cost like 40 cents a piece. So it's really important to use one until it just absolutely can't be used anymore before moving on to the next one. Because, you know, 40 cents is 40 cents. It's probably something I learned when I was growing up. You know, we didn't have like the most wealthy family in the world. My dad was, let's just say he was cheap. Okay, so there was, there was always this kind of, you know, even if it wasn't explicit, there was always this kind of, if you use it up, you can't get another one feeling. which was really a problem like with paints and things, but it's like, yeah, I know. If you use this palette and you use it up, you can't, you might not ever get another one. So anyway, yeah, there's just that kind of tendency is to use, use things until you just absolutely can't anymore. Yeah, and that's what I was doing with the other palette, but it really became it became unusable. Get a fresh, clean one. So well, it was until I put purple and red paint on it. beast has lots of sharp spiky teeth it really doesn't look friendly so if we ever meet Betty in the sewers I'm just kind of guessing it's not going to be a pleasant encounter you know like Betty's not going to invite us over for pie or something Pie or cookies, scones and tea. I might be wrong. You know, I think that would that would be kind of appropriate. You run into this this monstrosity in the sewer. You know, you find out that her, that your name is Betty. You get kind of you know, as nines would say, what's your tragic backstory? So you get the tragic backstory about Betty. And how, you know, Betty feels rejected and friendless. You know, and we listen, we do reflective listening. Okay, we use, we use that technique and establish a rapport with Betty by saying it must be really frustrating that so every time you meet somebody, they scream and run away? No, no, I didn't use it. I have to do it as an interrogative. I, I'd used an interrogative instead of declarative, so that was wrong. It was, people run away from you. It is really frustrating that people run. It is hard to make friends when people scream and run away. Okay, you do things like that, and then you get Betty's tragic backstory, and she hasn't been able to tell this tragic backstory to anybody practically ever, maybe like once before. You 
And so Betty becomes, you know, you just have this really long chat. Betty even has some pretty um, elaborate theories about what happened to Fervin. So you can have, we could have a nice long discussion about what happened to Fervin and Betty's theories, and we could discuss some of the alternate theories and get Betty's opinion about those. And then, and then we would have pie, because Betty makes really good pies. You wouldn't expect that, given, you know, the initial impression that you got of, of, of them. And um, but after you, you know, you spend some time together, you get to share share the pies. And it's not easy to make a good pie down in the sewer either. And so the party is genuinely impressed. I mean, not just not just being polite, but is genuinely impressed by Betty's, Betty's eye skills, using only things that are available in the in the sewers. Probably the 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 only advantage you know there is that when people see Betty and they scream and run away, is that sometimes they drop their stuff. And some of their stuff contains ingredients that could be used in the pies. So that's a little bit of Betty's secret. And then everybody in the party resists things like asking, is your last name Crocker? Right? I mean, no one, no one would do that. That would just be silly. So we don't ask that. Betty would be really offended if we did anyway. Um, yeah, so there's some very light colored, shiny teeth. So what's probably going to happen here is there's going to be multiple layers is that I'll use a wash or Nicole will, whoever decides to finish this thing, to darken the teeth. Um, it looks like on these pictures that um, you know sometimes sometimes the base is darker and sometimes the point is darker and there's always that question of which way to go how did that get there it's like there's a little splash of purple on there of white on the tongue no idea how that happened it must have splashed the paint I have to be careful now at the bottom um, you have to be a little more careful about the, the edges of the teeth here on the bottom because, look, you know, a camera view. Yes, I mean, maybe we could have because we have learned the reflective listening technique, we've been able to establish a rapport with Betty. We've had a really nice pie. We had a really good discussion about what happened to Fervin. We get some advice about going through the sewers. And then the biggest surprise, this, this would be, this would be pretty cool. I don't have to worry about this actually showing up in the campaign because I don't think our DM listens to me ramble that much. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, well, it's relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons and and he's going on and on about something, and I don't need to hear it. But the really cool thing could, that could happen is that it turns out that Betty has one uh, has made one other friend recently, and and that friend is Muriel. And so then we we would have a mutual friend. And that's always a, a good thing, and then. Um, best thing about that is that, you know, instead of further exploring the dungeon, which is what the DM would want us to do, 
Let's keep going deeper into the sewers. I want you to get into trouble. I created all of these dangerous scenarios that are trying to kill you, you know. But no, you're sitting around chatting with Betty. And then it turns out you have a mutual friend. And that would that could take the better part of another half hour of conversation. And then finally the DM just says, the sewers collapse, you all die. And see. This is this is good. This little detail painting here means that I get to spend um, spend a whole lot of time just painting little little teeth. I could do this for a while, and I am because I you know I want them to look okay. on break Miss Nicole if she's available you know what about colors and would it be would it be a good thing to paint the whole body out of drab and then you know try to layer colors on top of that or should we should I look at some other base color or some combination of base colors and maybe I can even, I'm going to write down the name of what this beast is. Because, you know, it's just, it's no longer amusing. It's embarrassing that after hearing it like three or four times, I still can't remember what it is. I know I'm terrible with names anyway, just in general, even people's names and stuff. But, I mean, other than remembering that, that their name is Betty, We haven't had we haven't had a character that we've run into with a tragic backstory in a good long time. But Betty will have a tragic backstory. Actually, it's not even a backstory, it's just a continuing story of just apparent rejection. You know, just rejection by all the people who come down through the sewers is Betty comes up, attempts to greet them, you know, and it comes across as like a threatening roar, right? Because a person's voice is a person's voice. Unless they can do different voices, I'm not very good at that. I can do Elseth Ralph, which sounds a lot like my voice anyway, and I can do Artemore which sounds, you know, not too, too much different, but I can definitely not do nines. It is made clear to me when I've attempted it. I need to get the goop off the brush here. Um, yeah, so Betty is an ongoing tragic backstory, but it turns out that we have a mutual friend that Muriel had come down to visit, you know, not too too terribly long ago. That he says that time isn't really good, no, doesn't have a clock. There's not much changing, you know, day to night going on in a sewer. You just have the artificial lights that kind of come on and off arbitrarily randomly from their perspective from sewer maintenance workers hmm. 
just kind of getting a little too thick to use there. We get a fair amount of stuff yet to do. I have to do all the the extra teeth here on this on these. So yeah, um, within what you know, Betty considers to be recent, uh, Muriel had come by and didn't scream and run away or drop their stuff. And Betty is a little bit disappointed that Muriel didn't drop their stuff because Muriel makes excellent curries and Betty would have enjoyed the cooking ingredients that, that they could could tell, they could smell. The aroma cooking ingredients that, that Muriel car carried. Uh, so they're a little disappointed that they didn't run away and drop it, but, you know, Muriel uh, decided to, you know, Ask Betty's name, you know, what's your tragic backstory, you know, the usual conversational kind of stuff. And then they got to be kind of buddies. And um, then it turns out that we knew Muriel. And so we have this whole new conversation we can have about our mutual friend. Maybe that's how our encounter. If we do run into uh, into this particular creature, that might be how our encounter will go. I think that'll do looks pretty menacing. Mm -hmm. So let me do the spikes here on the tentacles. Spikes or extra teeth or whatever they are. So let's take a surprisingly long time to paint because you have to get that edge right and then you have to get it from all different angles this, you know it's a good way to uh, take up take up some painting time and it has to be done whether they're teeth or spikes or who knows exactly what they are or why they're just uh, just part of it part of the, the natural configuration of whatever this is but in most of the sample pictures they're they're colored the same as the teeth And that's what I'm doing here. There's just a lot of them. So this rosin, the rosin printer, this is a fairly new thing for us. I mean, relatively, we had these PLA printers like the ones behind me. You know, the very first one was that kind of printer, and we use those for our dungeon tiles, so they do pretty... Sometimes they're just like running 24-7 for weeks on end. 
when we're producing a particular dungeon. Because there's lots of parts. I mean, and they're fairly large parts, relatively speaking. And the resin printer is fairly new. And it's, when it works, it has pretty impressive detail. Like this beast. Okay. The body itself has a lot of, you know, little contours and nooks and crannies and folds and things. So it's not the most detailed model that we've produced on it. But <clears throat> on the other hand, you have all these spiky teeth and things and they all, you know, really well. Again, I want to paint them up onto the body a little further than you might think because then I can paint the body color down to them without having a gap in the paint. At least that's the way I tend to paint these things. Try to remember to just rotate it in many different directions because sometimes just there's like a whole quadrant of a tooth that wasn't painted at all. It was, you know, just the way the angle of the brush was. Usually, usually that's like on the side of a tooth. Okay, so you paint it from the back, and then paint it from the front, and then you look and it's not painted at the side. And for me, that's how it sometimes turns out. This is taking a good long time. It's more relaxing than boring. Boring painting with Dyson Dungeons. So while I'm continuing the boring trek here of painting all these tentacle teeth, I'm going to do my little spiel about what Dyson Dungeons is. Dyson Dungeons is a group of friends and family started playing a D&D &D campaign over a year ago in a world that was created by our dungeon mistress Alexis. A very fascinating and massive world filled with danger and political intrigue and sometimes pretty decent food. to their chagrin, that is the DM's chagrin, um, party that will follow any red herring to its illogical conclusion. Anyway, we started playing this over a year ago, and then uh, early on decided that we would stream it. Why not? because people do stream their D&D campaigns. And so we started that and it continues three Sundays a month with a live chat at two o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, at least until Daylight Savings Time ends and then it will go back to Eastern Standard Time. But at the moment it's Daylight Time, Daylight Savings Time. Um, and that is how Dice and Dungeons started and continues to this day. Is this primarily the um, 
D&D stream. And it's a really cool campaign. We're having a lot of fun with it. And if you were to catch it with live chat, three Sundays a month at two o'clock Eastern, or previous stream episodes, I'll call them episodes, um, you can catch those on YouTube or listen to them as a podcast. And they're probably almost as good just listening to them as listening and watching. Anyway, that's what Dyson Dungeons started as. And then we, we started playing with, you know, this on a plastic one by one inch grid kind of thing. And then it got more elaborate and instead of just, you know, plain beige, got a set of printed ones so that there was like green for woodlands and blue for water and that kind of thing. We still use those as kind of the base for some of our encounters. And then our DM thought, well, I've always wanted a 3D printer. not always I mean it couldn't always be that because you couldn't really get them when she was like a little kid right they didn't exist at least in a non-industrial kind of setting where they were extremely expensive so I exaggerated when I said I've always wanted one because that that was actually an impossibility you're young enough, you don't even know if they exist or not. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so I love those little digressions. They, they, they fill the time and everybody can be amused by you don't know what's going to happen next. But eventually it was like, I think I'd like to have a 3D printer. And got a 3D printer and it started making useful objects. Like we, she made some... Uh, and traps that actually worked really well. So it's like, oh yeah, this isn't just a toy, this is real practical. <clears throat> and a couple of other, you know, household kind of items that that were that were kind of useful, but then said, well let's uh, let's make tiles, dungeon tiles that we can use on the stream. And so <clears throat> that whole process started. <clears throat> And it was, well, you know, you used to uh, make models, right? And I said, yeah, when I was a little kid, I would make models. Not sometimes when I was a big kid, at least, you know, up until my mid-teens, I think. That's probably when I stopped doing any kind of plastic modeling. And I, you know, would do some painting. And then later on, we got some Warhammer figures and painted those along with my kids. I did orcs and goblins, you know, and I you know, did okay. I'm pretty good at staying within the lines. Anyway, uh, started printing out dungeon tiles and I started painting them and Nicole started painting them because she's an artist and hers were artistic and mine were painted, <laughs> okay. They had color on them. Um, initially, it was just like little set pieces. Maybe some walls, um, some tents, crates and barrels. Not as, not as a company, you know, as a retail outlet, but real crates and real barrels. Got some mini figs to represent our characters. It just got more and more elaborate, <clears throat> as did the design and execution of the dungeon tiles. So anyway, we were doing this for the show, for the D&D stream. And Nicole said, well, or Alexis said, well, you know, why don't we stream the painting if you're going to be painting these? 
you know, it doesn't cost anything more. Other than maybe like getting a cheap ring camera, right? Because we're not setting up a studio. We're not setting up a painting studio and this isn't a how-to show. It's just this is, we're preparing stuff for our D&D &D campaign. But sure, you know, if we're doing it anyway, it, put turn a camera on, what's it going to hurt? That's how this got started, which is pretty much what it still does, which is preparing items, minifigs and dungeon tiles for our D&D &D campaign. It's gotten a little bit more elaborate. We have now designed some kind of set piece dungeons. Um, like one shows up here. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we did ages ago. Okay, that shows up uh, there is kind of underneath me. And there's a necromancy layer in there somewhere where you a couple of versions with different colored pools. That was an interesting story coming up with that, you know, finding this, we're finding that um, railroad modelers, there's one with a blood pool, okay, that railroad modelers sometimes have really cool stuff, and we've been able to adapt, <sighs> okay, that was an oops, but not a major oops, since it didn't fall into the paint. It's almost a major oops if there had been, if it hadn't been in these little wells. Okay, so I'm coming up in the brush again. Yeah, so that's how this got started is and continues. Most of what is done here are mini figs and um, dungeon tiles. But we also started creating some sort of set pieces and at some point, we might even make those available to other gamers, you know. And you can watch things painted in the stream. So, um, yeah, anyway. Kind of what we found out is that people who watch streaming, especially relaxing streaming like this, um, don't chat that much, and so, well, although I can see whether chat is happening, and sometimes, you know, we'll get some back and forth going, uh, for the most part, I found that I have to fill the time, and so I, I mutter on about things in the stream of consciousness kind of way, which is what you're experiencing today. There's also nice music playing in the background, so if I decide to stop muttering on about stuff, there's always that. But those of you who join in, either watching this as a stream or just listening to it or catching it on YouTube later, I want to thank you because... Uh, we just appreciate people who, who do views. We appreciate people who become followers, that our followers group is growing all the time, and that's wonderful. Sometimes people become sponsors. That's really great. Or you could go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. We really much appreciate it as well. Okay, um, yeah, so there's there's a couple of little issues here, you know, where that got onto, I need to put a little bit of red back in, just some spots here and there where the white, the ivory color got onto it, just a little bit too far. <clears throat> it looks like it splashed a little bit, it's kind of weird that way. But I'll get a little brush out and do some touch-up on that. It's mainly the inside that I'm concerned about at this point because the outside will be painted the body base color. 
And that will cover up any places where the tooth color has gone a little too long, but there's some spots where I need to do that dark red. And I'm gonna get out a really, really tiny brush for that. I mean, this, this is okay, but um, sometimes holds a little too much paint. doesn't clean very well. Really an issue. I'm going to have to get the alcohol out to clean this brush. <clears throat> but I will do that after I do this touch-up. No, I'm going to do it before because I want that to dry a little bit before I get the red paint on it. And then after I'm done with these teeth, <clears throat> there we go. A nice seal is a uh, you know, isopropyl alcohol in here, which is a really good solvent for the acrylic paint. And the uh, this ancient jar. Feels very tightly, which is okay, because we don't need the fumes all over the place. Okay, that's cleaner now than it was. That back on. Get out the intestinally painted brush. Get a little bit of that red, dark red paint. There it is. I keep running into is not being able to tell something if, sometimes you get these reflections and you can't tell if that's like a spot that wasn't covered and the primer is showing through or whether it just wasn't covered there's a spot there that just wasn't covered anyway that's not what I'm dealing with here right now Right here and right now, I am attempting to fix some of these spots. And we got a little bit too far. time reaching. Especially these bits right up at the top here, that where it will definitely show on camera. That looks better. done with this touch-up what I'm going to do next is take a break 
and when I come back with color advice, either be painting a base coat on the body of this uh, creature, or I'll be working on the doppelmurials. I'm not sure which one it will be, but it will be one of those two things. Personally, I'm kind of leaning toward the doppelmurials. I think those those would be fun to do. And I don't have to worry about D&D uh, &D canon in terms of the appropriate coloration. Okay, well, what we have here now is um, a base-coated mouth and teeth. I don't know what color these little spikes up there should be. Maybe they should be that. I'm going to just paint those the same as the teeth color. That'll give me some options a little bit later. And I'm finding there's some flaws anyway, so... Um, yeah, hopefully that paint is still good. Looks like a whole chunk of this tooth here. Fairly big piece of it right up in front isn't painted. And there's this isn't the best brush for this, but I'm gonna paint these little spikes up here. And they may or may not stay this color, I don't know. But if any, if, if nothing else, at least they'll be painted whitish, this ivory color, so that I don't forget them. Done, but it's done. Okay. Um, just to see if I want to do any more of that dark red touch up. And there's one spot between these teeth right there that I think I want to get get touched. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, and then on the outside, it'll be painted a different color anyway. Okay. So. There's the first half of the Monday edition of Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons. Um, yeah, sorry about getting started late today. As I explained, we had an internet outage that started earlier this morning and ended just a little bit after the usual starting time, which is 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and then when I turned everything on, nothing worked. So I had to do the the old standard, is it plugged in? Yes. Then turn it off for 30 seconds and I'll turn it back on again and see if it works. So I did that twice because it didn't work the first time and the second time. And then I discovered that there had been some changes made 
in the way the studio is set up. No, not the studio, the workshop, because it's definitely not a studio, right? You can see that. It is cardboard and ring camera. Um, but yes, the workshop here, the work area had been set up differently. This is using a different camera than the, the one I had before. Things, anyway, yeah, it took a while to get going because nothing was working. But now it seems to. Everything except my oversized chat window. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take a break. I, I need to take a break, and probably so do you. And I will be back more or less at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time. It always turns out to be more rather than less. And when I get back, I will be either painting doppelmurials or I will be putting a base coat on the body of this in anticipation of you know something else so one thing i'm thinking i might do this is that we have these pearlescent paints and there's a there's this purple color there's two purples okay, but one of them is neon purple um it depends on the yeah i'm thinking of getting a little bit of that and doing a wash on there to make it look like all slimy and wet because this is flat paint and I think that that might look pretty cool so I might try that I don't know about the inside of the mouth what we want to do with that there's some um, there's some other colors but I think it would give it a different a look we don't want probably just wash it with a little bit of gray wash or something um, just to make it look kind of gloopy, but I think the tongue I think the tongue would look pretty cool with that uh, pearlescent paint on it. So I might try that. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? Is that we just have to print a new or re reprime this or something. So I might uh, I might be working more on this, whatever it is, or on the doppel murials. We'll see after break. So thanks for joining in so far, and I will be back in a bit and we'll uh, start up on one of these things. See you then. Never really know when it's going to pop back on. Push the end break button. It's clearly labeled end break so that I don't mess it up. Um, and then uh, yeah, anywhere from three to ten seconds later, it comes back on again. So there. Um, so I did did a little research on things with uh, with Nicole, and this is this is called an Otiug, uh, O T Y U G H Otiug. Anyway, it's a uh, Canon. Um, D and D monster. Yeah, this thing defaults. There we go. <clears throat> After the break, everything defaulted back to the way it was before, and yeah, that's right. No, it's a it's a new error. The, uh, there used to be two cameras here, and the one that's default is the one that's not here anymore. I discovered that through trial and error a little bit earlier today when I was trying to get everything to work. <clears throat> and so I'm not sure if the cables got switched or what, what the decision was. But anyway, the default camera is now the one that's not here. Okay, it's just gone. I'm not sure where it went. And the camera that's on here, I have to switch over. Yep, always something new. And the chat box is in a different place. Anyway, this is called that. That's, that's what this is. And I got some advice about colors. And the advice was don't use a really dark underlayer. 
what you might want to try to do, with, because it's such a large thing, is instead of doing all sorts of light, weird highlights and stuff, is uh, put a base coat on it and then use speed paint to just go over it real quickly and hopefully that will highlight all the folds and things on it. Um, it does need a base coat because just these little errors like that would, would show. So I would either need to get the primer out and do all the touch up around it and hope that the color would come out. But we want it to look kind of greenish. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to do all of the edges around the teeth and the other teeth and the little suckers under here. Then use a big brush and base coat this whole thing. Hopefully there's enough paint left in this little bottle uh, to do this whole bit. And then that's going to dry and I'm going to try speed paint on it and um, kind of give it like an orange maybe. So I'd give it that kind of look like this one. Okay, where it's kind of green underneath and then kind of orangish over the top. Anyway, that's the intent. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So the first step is to um, do the small parts, like all around the mouth and the tentacles. And then with a large brush, a larger brush, um, finish it off. I'm going to use, not this one, this one has a little bit bigger tip on it, but it's angled, and I think I can get, I can get it, you know, to where I want it, but at the same time, you know, provide a little bit of extra coverage, you know, so it doesn't take forever. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. One thing that's kind of nice is that I have the camera set up <clears throat> so that it's not all oriented weirdly. Let's see if it stays this way. <clears throat> or Submarine Wednesday, when Submarine Wednesday comes around in two days. Yeah, we haven't used this paint in a while, so I'm going to give it a good stirring. This was one of the very first greens that we ever had, so it's a little older. And I'm not sure how much is left in it. And I don't think we have a backup color. So, um, anyway, well, see if there's enough paint here to make happen what needs to happen. Just taking a little bit out here yeah, before I use it. Yeah, yeah. Butter, 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 butter. What I'm doing is I'm painting the boundary line here between uh, the body color and in some cases the teeth. And in other cases, the uh, There's some interesting flaws that I'm seeing in the tooth, but those are going to get washed and highlighted later. So I think we can, I think that can get fixed without having to touch them up right now. This goes on kind of bright, but it dries to um, 
to a little darker kind of grayish green so it's kind of a nice it should be a good undercoat at least I'm hoping that's what will turn out Paint this base coat on. Then, depending on how much time is left, start working on doppel murials because I want this to be quite dry before I attempt to use the speed paints on the rest of it. Not the rest of it. I mean, <laughs> be using it on this. This is what I'm going to be using it on. But I want I want the undercoat to be dry. I don't want it to It'll just turn into some sort of gooey mess. Although gooey mess might be appropriate for this. Okay, well that's the bottom. Let's see what we can do about the top here. This paint is covering pretty well. This little bit is going a long way, so I can be optimistic about there being enough to cover the entire body. This is a, as many figs go, this is very large. Just the scale. Muriel is about the size of most of our characters, maybe a little shorter, so. Yeah, you can see that this would be a this would be a fearsome beast to encounter, or monstrosity, or whatever it actually is. The beog. I hope the music is playing because I'm not I'm not finding terribly much to say here while I am painting this. It's doing a fairly good job of just rambling nonsensically before the break, but I don't know. Kind of lost my momentum there, I guess. <clears throat> I think we're going to continue on the theme of this is this is Betty, Betty the Otiug, 
And Betty's very lonely down in the sewers because um, when people encounter them and, and you know, just was, this is just Betty saying, this is Betty saying, hi. I want to be friends, please. I'm so lonely. I make really good pies. There's too much fake English English accents going on in D&D &D campaigns, so Betty shouldn't have that. Maybe Betty can have um, an old Philadelphia, like Jimmy Stewart or something, you know, carry, you know, some of those actors from the early, early days of black and white movies. <clears throat> but we have to, Betty needs to have an appropriate accent, but not one of those pseudo-British kind of accents that happen in D&D &D all the time. That would that would be cliche, and Betty is definitely not cliche. Okay, well let's go around the the teeth up here now. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna have to hold it like this. So I'm gonna move the camera. Hopefully that won't be won't be too much of a problem there. Just need to brace it against my knee here. coat between the teeth. If I can get this going okay adequately, if I can get adequately adequately done here, then I can get out a big brush and um, paint the rest of the body base coat real quickly. Paint the edge of the teeth and then get in between the teeth next. At least you know, from this angle. For those of you who are catching this, either the live stream kind of lurking in the background there, or maybe watching it on YouTube later, we will be returning to Submarine Wednesday. The last time I did Submarine Wednesday, I had to end it a little abruptly. I didn't get as much done as I was hoping to. Um, that was a travel day for me. And I was hoping to take a ferry across Lake Michigan, you know, the Great Lakes, which is large enough so that, well, let's just say it, it's narrowest point down near the southern end. It's about 60 miles across. <coughs> um, yeah, that's that's the narrow point. So, I mean, it, it is a big lake. 
and it's just easier to take a ferry across that 60 miles than it is to drive all the way around it, um, which is like four times as long. But the wind came up and the ferry operator says, oh no, it would be uncomfortable for you. I mean, it, the ferry could have handled the, the waves, I think, but uh, what he meant by uncomfortable was uh, you'd be throwing up on my ferry and I don't want to have to clean up after you. Which is a reasonable thing, right? So it got canceled and because the drive in terms of miles and time was so much longer than taking the ferry, um, I had to end sooner than I wanted to. I didn't get that much done on submarine Wednesday last week, Wednesday. And I'll be picking up there. And I'm just hopefully getting really close to being able to finish up the mess hall and the bunk and the bunk deck. There's just a lot of, there's a bunch. I'm doing the galley now. I was gonna, what I was going to finish on Wednesday and I'll be starting with is putting the, some bunks and a wall in. I'll be installing those. I'd gotten the tables and chairs in, which was an accomplishment because now it looks like a mess hall. <coughs> and I'd gotten some decent detail done. I got the book, the bookcase done. So that was a that was actually a pretty big deal to get that done. <coughs> um, but now I need to cement those into the model. And I was just about to do that when I got the uh, not, the uh, notification that I was going to be taking a long drive instead of a short drive to the ferry. Anyway, that was my uh, that's what, what happened on Wednesday. So I'll be picking that up, and then I'll be working on the galley detail. And I'm not sure how that's going to go. There's a, um, just incredible detail on the cabinets and the spice racks and the sink and the faucets and everything. And I'd like to show as much of that as possible by painting that detail in. So I'll be, I'll be working on that on Wednesday and I hope it goes okay because it it'll look pretty cool if it does. <laughs> and then if I can get that done I can cement those pieces in, fill in the gaps. There'll be some gaps that will need to be filled in, I think, um, and then touch up painted. But af after that's done, then I can start working on the control room. And I'll be going through the experience again of trying to find the pieces. I've got three separate model kits because they're authentic 1960s models, okay? They're not reproductions, they're, they're the 1960s version. And some of them got started, poorly done, poorly painted, poorly cemented. The uh, molding was very poorly done on some of the pieces. So they've needed a lot of work just to, uh, just to look like they're supposed to and to fit where they're supposed to fit. And the control room looks pretty challenging as far as that goes, so we'll see. Okay. Um, yeah, I need to paint around the little tentacle suckers down here, don't I? <clears throat> I just forgot about those.
Yep. Managed to get green paint on where the purple is. That was an oops. Looks like it'd be fairly easy to fix, though. That just came from not being able to get the brush oriented in the right way. Anyway, I'll touch those up after I get the whole base coat put on. Uh, the green will be dry and I'll be able to reapply the purple. And the same thing there. I would say that this, that that bit down there, which was should have been some of the easiest on the, on the model because the, this nice little indentation around where one color meets the other turned out to be the messiest. Nicely done. So that's going to need need some uh, some major rework there in terms of purple paint. Or maybe I'll, you know, I might even reconsider the color. Since I have to repaint them, I might just paint them a different color. But as you can see, it was not well done. I'm going to get some of the paint out of here. I'm going to have to use the alcohol in this. This paint, this brush holds a lot of paint. Ah, a new follower. Thank you. I should have been looking up every now and then at the chat screen, but I didn't. So, thank you so much for becoming a follower. I really appreciate that. Hey, old Brogger. Thanks for joining in. I am painting... In Otiog, at least that's what I'm told this is called. Uh, I got the mouth and the teeth in, and I'm painting a base coat on the body. This whole body is going to be painted this kind of green, so I'm just going to be using a huge brush and spreading a lot of paint on it. Um, so that's going to be pretty boring. Uh, but yes, it needs to be done, and then I'm going to use our speed paint. Whatever the brand name is of the stuff that we bought, um, kind of an orange or yellow, because I'm trying to make it ending up looking <coughs> sort of like that. So the green will kind of show through, and then the orange speed paint hopefully <coughs> will create that kind of look. We'll find out. Find out on Friday because this base coat is going to have to dry for longer than probably the rest of the stream after I finally get it on. Well, thanks for coming back in. Anyway, what I'm doing today is painting this and then on Wednesday going back to the submarine and attempting to paint infinitesimally small, I mean really incredibly tiny uh, detail on the, the storage cabinets and the frying pans and everything else on the submarine galley. And I hope that goes okay, because if it doesn't, pretty much I'm going to have to take the paint off and start over. Because uh, cause I don't want to lose the detail by just covering it with multiple layers of paint. This brush continues to be next to impossible to clean. The whole tip of the brush is green now. influence the next color that it's asked to paint. 
So I will be getting out a large dollop of this green paint and spreading it around all over this beast. If it, I wonder if this will hold. It's really large, but there's enough contact area, maybe. No, I haven't. I have to watch it because I had been away for a while. But, um, yeah, we'll need to catch that. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay, this is supposed to be very easy now because I just spread vast quantities of green paint. You can see the contrast between the stuff that's dry and the new application is it goes on bright and it dries um, darker and flatter, which is nice. Hopefully this will make a good base coat for the speed paint. There's a lot of surface area here. I'm glad I'm doing it this way. Because if I try to do this, like, with a little brush detailing things, it would be impossible. So the main thing here is to make sure that I don't miss spots. Or at least if I miss spots, I can come back to them later, okay? This, I'm going to have to try something else here. I'm going to have to paint the bottom first, because I can't get to it while it's on the stand. So I'm going to do that. Paint the bottom so I can rotate it well. I'm going to paint the claws too. I, those. Those will be painted on later as a detail after the speed paint dries. I really need to do this this way because I need to rotate it in a lot of different directions that I can't with the stand in order to get it underneath. This is, this is going on very quickly, that's good. And this paint, I'm glad I chose this color because unlike some colors, this one covers really well. And um, isn't, probably isn't going to need a lot of touch up. It spreads nicely and covers well. So, Nicole's suggestion is was a good one in terms of uh, the base coat for this Otiog. Great fun. This way I can splat it all over the base and not have to worry about it. I just need to uh, get this in the light. Brighter color? I don't know. We'll find out. If this doesn't work, um, this thing is supposed to be really dark and gruesome looking. So if this, if this doesn't work, we'll just um, just repaint it. I hadn't. I haven't really used the speed paints. I have to say that I haven't used them, so I don't know what I'm doing. This is 
it, it looks darker on um, on the monitor than it does in real life. It's actually kind of a bright, kind of yellowish green. Hopefully it'll work. If not, um, then your advice is well taken. Bright and light undercoats. Okay. I have a much lighter green. So what I'm going to do, though, is since I started this, is I'm going to finish painting it just because I, I have to now. And I'll consider this to be like a primer. And I do have a much lighter, lighter green color. So I want the undercoat to be green in order to get the, the color mix. And um, I will take your advice and then get the... Yeah, it's a heavy thing. It doesn't want to stick. Uh, yeah, there is some bone on the on the teeth. These little bits of teeth. Yeah. That. Okay. Thanks. Well, really, you know what I might try to do because we really want this thing to be dark. It is supposed to be a very dark kind of creature. Is it might work out? Nikki thought it might work, but she hasn't used it much either. You just kind of spread it on the teeth, right? Like a wash, and it uh, picks up the texture of the teeth, does some nice shading on it. That would be good. Well, as old Brogger is pointing out, this is not a how-to show because um, I'm not that good at it. I am really good at getting paint as I used to say, you know, with crayons, I'm really good at coloring between the lines. I mean, I can keep, I'm really good at that. And even with my failing eyesight, I can do the details pretty well. But when it comes to artistic kinds of things, shading, washing, I mean, all of those kinds of things, I've never developed those kinds of skills. So this is not... This is not a how to do that kind of thing show. Frequently, I'd say, um, oh, by the way, uh, the way the thing I just did, don't do that. It is with some frequency a how not to do things show. But, you know, there's two ways of learning things there's the learning where you learn how to do it and you practice it that way. And then there's the learning that comes from, uh, no, that was wrong. Don't do it that way. So frequently on this stream, you get that kind of learning experience. The, uh, yeah, that didn't work. That looks terrible. That was a spill. That made a mess. Okay. And so we just, you know, have to have kind of that open mind when you, watch relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons because if Nicole, if Nikki is doing it, she's an artist and she's really amazing at detailing and shading. And so can show you, you know, actually some techniques that work and that can be repeated. I am good at getting, using crayons and painting between the lines. I'm going to highlights on the top. Okay, that, that's exactly what I'm going to be trying to do. So when it comes time to paint the teeth, I'm going to take that advice and use the, the, um, the, the um, speed paint on the teeth. Not the bone sounds appropriate for this. So 
So if you want to learn more about how to do something, you should watch old bloggers uh, streams because the old blogger is uh, practiced and skilled. Well, anyway, I'm not sure how this will turn out, but it is definitely green. There's a lot of, there's green all over the place. Pallid bone. Yep, I, I made it green. And I'm just going to rotate it around and try to, you know, make sure I didn't miss any big spots like that that just need to be done. And either this will work and it will look dark and horrible or it'll be awful and um, just have to repaint it and try something different. There it is, green. So one more thing I want to do on this particular model is I was going to make the uh, the mouth, the tongue look slimy. And so I'm going to use, I'm going to get out the, uh, for less paints. Again, I have no idea if that's going to work or not, but if it doesn't, well, then we'll have um, an opportunity for improvement. Looks like this is going to need an alcohol bath as well. Maybe not. We'll just do it anyway. What have I got left? About almost an hour. I am going to work on doppelmurials. I, th I just think it's a cool idea that may or may not ever show up in our D&D stream. Um, I finished a real Muriel a couple of weeks ago. When that came out, you know, she's a pretty simple model, but it came out okay. And I've got three misprints that I was using that I was using to test different color combinations uh, for Muriel's face and clothes and things. Um, so I will, uh, I'm going to paint Doppel Muriels in different color combinations and maybe they will show up in our D&D campaign as a way of distracting us or misleading us. We don't. But what I want to try to do, where is the brush that I want? Hmm. Everything but what I want. Um, yeah, this one. Okay. This is another how not to keep your workplace clean, keep everything back. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, every, always put things away so you can find them again because they're always where you left them because that's where they're supposed to belong. And uh, none of that happened here. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to put neon neon purple highlights using a pearlescent paint on the tongue. And that's royal purple. And that's pearl violet. Come on. Oh no no no. That's not it. I don't want neon purple. My color chart is pointing to the wrong things. I just want plain old purple. There, yeah. purple. <clears throat> so these pearlescent paints are really viscous. They're very thick. They pretty much act as a wash because they're also very translucent. We discovered that when they started doing a color chart. 
but sometimes they get a really nice effect, like for water. Okay, like I tested it there, so I can get water look. You can put little white highlights on, like little waves and stuff. Um, yeah, and they're a little messy to use, and I, I would say that, you know, we've only, we've used those for, like, highlights of things when we wanted to make something look kind of shiny, like Sturmgrimmy. Our favorite sea monster, Sturmgrimmy, has pearlescent highlights. That's it, just grab it, grab it on the wet paint, let's do it that way. So I don't want to get a whole lot of this on here, but I want the tongue to look slimy, and the pearlescent paint will do that. Slimier looking tongue than it was before. And I am done messing with this for today. And I'm going to set it aside, let that dry, and then... Oh, my. Huh. Yeah, right there on the top. See that? Right there. The whole spot that I totally missed when I was putting the other paint on. Pretty amazing. No, I could miss that. There's still enough here. I could grab it and paint it over. There's probably other spots like that, right? That that I missed. Just like everything else in life, it's important to look at things from, from more than one angle. Otherwise, they are not as they appear to be. Okay, yeah, I'm going to rotate this. I might as well leave it on camera so you can see, see the spots that I missed. Okay. And share the chagrin. Like, ugh, really? How could I possibly have missed something right on the very top? Well, I'm sure I'll find more later. Okay. Um... You know, these pearlescent paints will do that too. They'll dry in the bottle cap and then you get these cute little rings of shiny paint. Okay. I'm going to be painting murals here. 
not murals, but murials. Muriel is a Bollywog, um, a frog creature. And even though some of these are sort of painted already, I am going to repaint them different colors. I'm going to be starting with their um, skin. Well, actually, no. I, I, the skin goes up to it. I'm going to be starting with their with their clothes. Okay, the cloak, because then I can paint the flesh up to the edges along the body, and so on and around. Um, so I picked out some colors to paint their frog skin, but now I need to have some colors. I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint one. Um, oh, I think light gray. They, they're going to look different than the real Muriel. The real Muriel, this this is the color here of her kind of like burlapy um, clothes. <clears throat> so what I might do is I might pick this lighter color with the browner wash and really make it look kind of scabby. Um, I think that's buff. Hmm. Can't remember colors anymore. Um, buff, buff would be a good color. Dark deck tan would be a good color. We might even do a. Like, uh, leather brown or something. So let me find these paints. It's cork brown. Cork brown's a good color. Let's see if I can make that. Good. Sure. Since I have it, finding the color is always half the, half the work. I want to do one light though. I want the buff. So here's buff. We'll start with that. Nope, that's deck tan. That's one of them. Here's buff. That's another one. And then I need leather brown, which is over there somewhere. Okay, well. Here we go. I'm going to use uh, this brush here, and I'm going to start with the buff one. Yeah, the, the chibis, those would be fun. And they're fairly large, too, so they shouldn't be too hard to paint. Maybe you can come over to the workshop, the workshop, not studio and uh, do that. We have one of these stands. See how this goes. But luckily, you're watching me do relaxing painting, so if you've been gone for 10 minutes, you haven't really missed anything. Other than that, I couldn't get a brush clean, and I found out that I missed a spot. And I, then I spent a good deal of amount of time wondering about what color to paint these things that aren't going to matter, because <clears throat> they're just uh, kind of like... Uh, Extra versions. <laughs> they're they're doppelgangers. They're Muriel doppels. Of one of our NPC friends in the sewers. She lives in the sewers uh, as a druid, 
and makes amazing curries. I think we even have, I think we even have a Muriel. Me <coughs> recipe. I mean, not real, but, you know, <clears throat> in show. Be doing a light brown wash on this because I want this to look like a washed out version of the real Muriel. I want them all to look muriel ick Muriel-ish, without looking like Muriel, so that we can't, we won't be, we'll be befuddled, but not confused. Look like Muriel? You don't look like Muriel. But you look like Muriel, but you don't look like Muriel. Are you Muriel? <laughs> These should go pretty quickly once I get the colors figured out. up showing up in our stream the DM will have to figure out what they really are otherwise they're just going to be sitting around as unused unloved minifigs <laughs> so, the rough spun clothes there's one We'll do another one in uh, I am hoping for an interesting encounter in the sewers. I have no idea if that will happen or not because I don't have control over those things. But um, if we have I know we're, we're going to be looking for Muriel in the sewers. Because <clears throat> if we're in the sewers, Muriel should be there. And I painted a Muriel. You know, there's always that metagaming thing, right? It is a, you know, you paint things and then they show up. So I'm thinking that it would be kind of fun. And I don't know if the DM would think so or not. I don't know. What do you think? That... Uh, we would encounter uh, fake Muriels. Muriel gang ganger, gangers. Similar to, but not identical to, the real Muriels. I really need a second one of these. I have no clue where it went. So, what I may end up doing is I may end up doing these flawed figures um, not for practice as much as filling the time. Well, this goes on looking kind of like the same color as the other one, but it's, it turns out to be, as it dries, it goes a lot grayer. less yellow at least um, at least that's the way it looks on the color chart
Oh, yeah. But when I saw these, you know, since these these were printed and they were defective because the, the orb on the head of the staff didn't print. Sometimes these prints are real touchy. You know, just some, some little detail. For whatever reason, that particular detail is just not going to work. It just decides it's not going to. Um, but since we have three of them, I thought it would be kind of fun to paint them so that they were similar but not identical to the real Muriel. And it would just, it would give the DM just one more thing to play with as we go through the sewers, get it doing sewery things. find out. This paint, <clears throat> I don't remember using this very much, but it's almost empty. Excuse me. And what, what should we do last time? Mm, this will be okay. There's plenty of it left. I don't know what will become of these uh, fake Muriels. I'm not sure if I'll finish them today or not. They go pretty quickly, I think. But uh, when I start painting the flesh part of it, I have to be a little more careful because I have edges. And I probably should paint the hats before I do the flesh anyway, because just just the way they touch each other. has a purple hat. But I've got this fuchsia color, which is, you know, a light purple. I think I'll do one that way. And then I'll do one kind of maybe vermilion. Because I want them to be sort of in the same color family, but, you know, they didn't get the colors right. out way too much color, too much paint. Mm, just a couple of drops, but still. 
But it go, that goes back to what I was saying really early in the stream. It's like when I was growing up, it's if you use it up, you can't get it again. So you just never used anything. But I know I can order this paint. There will be some supplier somewhere that has it. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to do hats next. Do one for nines. I'm going to do that one first. Here we go. I'm painting this before I do the skin color because it has to go under the under the rim like that and then I can paint up to it with the frog color. Oh come on. So, so stupid. That's the problem with only having one one little stand thing, right? One holder is, um, yeah. Let's put your finger right in the wet paint. Oops, don't do this when it's at home. Don't do it, but I just did. Nope, nope, nope. This is a how not to show. Right? I get I get green all over my fingers just from washing your brushes. More how not to. Don't do any of these things the way I'm doing them. I did though is I did a nice job filing down the printing floor back of this particular example Miriam there was a flat spot on the back of it and I was able to fix it I'm actually apparently much better at um, sanding and shaping than painting. So if we had a relaxing sanding and shaping with Dyson Dungeons, we'd be able to um, be a better example than I am with the painting bit. Okay. That hat is pink. The next hat is going to be azure. Then what? Maybe I could do orange, I could do vermilion. Not really there. Well, I know we need more pink things, and there, there it is. There's a pink, a pink thing. Okay. 
Let me stand. I'm going to do this one next. These actually have a little bit of a hat band, and I did that on the real Muriel, but I'm not going to get that fancy with the fake Muriels here. And then the last one. I do the last one. Let me look at my color charts. See if it's something nice and inappropriate. And reds. See if I can find that color. Appropriate for this, really. Mm -hmm. Why am I spending time worrying about this? I might have time to do the skin color on one of these then. Probably the one with the pink hat because uh, the rest of these look like they're not drying that fast. I think this is the one I did the coat on first. No, that's the deck. It's this one. So I'll probably do the skin color on this one next. And I have to do something with the chin color. I think I might just do this chin color on all three of them the same. I'm going to do that sooner than later. see how this turns out. Yeah, it's kind of an ugly color. I think it's, it should be good. Especially painting it over the purple. But the purple only covered part of the hat. And this doesn't cover very evenly, so red doppel, red doppel Muriel, I think this will be pretty good.
Okay, yeah. Alright, picked out three colors for this for the frog skin. They are not the same colors as Muriel. Muriel is this color, this green, and these three greens are nothing like that. Okay. So another way we can tell them apart. Um, well, let's see how, see if I need, if I can do this without using a head magnifier. Let's find out. Color would go, yeah, I think this one, I think we'll do, I think we'll do this color with this. Use up all the wells in my brand new palette here. Well, this might be the last thing I end up doing today. I'll have more fake murials to kind of play around with on Friday so that I can avoid doing something else maybe. I wasn't sure, you know, how far along these would go, but I need to have the base coat on the uh, Otiog dry before I can do anything with it. And then that may turn out to have been a disaster anyway, because I used the wrong base coat. Should have done something lighter, but I didn't. So we're going to live and learn through the example of don't do it this way. There. That was an uh-oh. A major uh-oh. That was caused by me just bumping the brush against an already painted part. I'm going to get some of that off initially. And then I'll come back. Oh, maybe I can get it all off. Nice. Okay, that works. I will take that as a sign of uh, hopefulness I need just to, need to get in there. enough. These are just fake murials. it again? Really seriously? Wow. So this is a cursed Muriel.
I tried to do that, I would have failed. And she's got like little cuffs on. And the real Muriel has those painted cuff a different color, but the fake Muriels are just not, they're not as detailed because, um, you know, they're fake Muriels and because I am not interested in spending the time and effort to, to do what needs to be done to make them look better. Hi, frog skin color. Hello, fake Muriel skin color. Yeah, I'm going to have to touch that up. It just went over too far. Okay, well, something to do. I think this is the deck tan. Probably should have used a finer detail brush. What I'm doing, I just got... I started getting to be in a little bit of a hurry and yeah, that's that's a how not to thing as well. Is don't just don't get into a hurry. Be a relaxing painting painting person. And just take your time. Do it right the first time so you don't have to redo it later. Keep your touch up to a minimum. Okay, um, we got 10 minutes left. So what I'm going to do with that 10 minutes is I need to pick a chin color. Maybe I'll, I'll do the chin colors later. I, think. I can do another Muriel, not frog skin. Remember to come back and fix this though. This brush isn't ideal for this, but it's, it's adequate. Everything's shaking up. There we go. And what I'm going to try to do is not get it all over the um, 
sackcloth dress there. Okay, this is gooey sticky. Nice. One of those where there's paint all over the rim and it's sticking to the Where I'll be all over everything. You can tell we're getting to the end here. Blood sugar levels dropping, getting grumpy, starting to do oh ohs, unnecessary oh ohs, as opposed to the essential oh ohs that happen from time to time. But we're in the final. The final minutes of the Monday edition of Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons. So I want to thank everybody who joined in um, during the stream or catching it later on YouTube. Thanks so much. Thanks to the new followers. Followers are always welcome. Any support you can give Dyson Dungeons is appreciated by every member of Dyson Dungeons, not just me, but also Nines, the Tabaxi Bard, Zoya Ansul, the Changeling Druid, our Dungeon Mistress, Alexis, and my character, Little Seth Ralph, the Frabog Fighter. Hey, everybody. All the members of Dyson Dungeons appreciate your participation and your support. So thanks so much. If you have an opportunity, catch one of our episodes with live chat on three Sundays a month, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Or you can watch it on YouTube or listen to it as a podcast. Any of those work. You can become a follower. You can become a sponsor. You can go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. And if you become a patron, you get access to all sorts of perks like um, the DM notes that are being posted on uh, Patreon. Going back to some of the very early sessions, so you can see what the DM was thinking. And if you want to, it'd be kind of interesting. You can then watch the episode and compare it to the notes to just see how we as characters managed to mess up everything that the DM was planning to have happen during that session. We are, as players and characters, adept at that kind of, um, oh yeah, didn't expect that, but, you know, if there's a pie in the window, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that something is going to happen, or there's a locked gate, which is supposed to have steered the players in another direction, but no, leads to endless, futile attempts to get through the lock gate, that kind of thing. That kind of thing happens all the time on uh, our D&D street, so you might really enjoy seeing that kind of thing occur. So again, thanks for uh, joining us all for relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Hope you found it relaxing and sort of entertaining. And as I finish up the base coat of the frog skin on these doppel murials, fake, fake murials.
Friday. I'm going to finish them up because I, I think it's just a really neat idea that may or may not ever come to anything. But since I had these minifigs, rather than just using them for painting practice like I did to get the color scheme for the real Muriel down, um, who knows? Who knows what, what may or may not come of them? Well, this one needs touching up, too. Okay, so there's that. Let me clean this off. I really should clean this. In fact, I think I will. But otherwise, it's just going to be a mess again. There's a, oh wow, there is a lot of paint on this rim. Which is why it doesn't seal right and when it comes up. And why the cap pulls off when I open it. This note, the note of cleaning a bottle cap, I'll be ending this stream of Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons. And thank everybody yet again for joining in, uh, becoming a follower, becoming a sponsor, becoming a watcher of our D&D campaign, which would be terrific. And I will see you, I will see you on Submarine Wednesday where I will be attempting to paint tiniest little detail in the galley of the 1960s vintage Renoir submarine. Let me cap this up if I can. Clean this brush if I can. I'm going to clean the brush before I end the stream. There's nothing more exciting than watching someone try to get paint out of the bristles of a brush. Don't you think? Or don't you? And this brush is holding a lot of paint. Um. Yeah. So I've got uh, I've got a bunch of little doppel Muriels kind of scattered around here. Uh, they need a little bit of work yet. I need to finish painting this one green. I need to wash the clothes. I need to do some touch up, especially along the left cheek. Get, get a chin color. Uh, paint the staffs brown. Not too terribly much work, but you know a little touch up here and there. And then I will have three doppelmurials that will either be like never used or might be a, a special encounter in the sewers. I don't know. Uh, yeah, kind of fading away here near the end of this stream. So I apologize for that. Probably should have had something more than that little bit of snack I had during break, but I didn't. So, blood, low blood sugar levels saying thanks again and see you on Submarine Wednesday. Bye.